Kerbala, we're walking. We hear Zainab talking. Ya Hussain, To your grave, we're flocking. On your door, we're knocking. Ya Hussain, Tenth of Muharram 61 AH. The grandson of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Hussein ibn Ali, along with his family and companions, were massacred on the desert plains of Karbala by the tyrannical leader Yazid, son of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Only 50 years after the death of the Holy Prophet, the religion of Islam had witnessed the so-called Caliph of the Islamic State butchering the family of a very man who brought the religion to the world. Ya Sayyidi, Ya Abu Hassan, we are blessed to be in this holy city of yours. You have accepted us as your Zawar, Mawlai. We are following on your footsteps and going towards the city of liberation, of martyrdom, of freedom. You are the one who reached Karbala, lifted the soil of Karbala, wept and cried and said from this soil, there are martyrs who will be resurrected on the day of judgment and shall enter Jannah without accountability. Sayyidi Ya Abul Hassan. We are heading towards the shrine of your beloved son, Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Sayyidi Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, we would like you to accept our ziyara. We would like you to call us back. We want to be of your zawar. We want to be of the ones who cast our eyes on your golden dome. Do not make this our last opportunity to visit your blessed shrine. Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Ya Imam al Muttaqeen, Ya Ya'soub al Deen. We are now walking towards Sayyid al Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein. We are honoring your son Abu al Fadl al Abbas. We are walking in the footsteps of Zainab and Zain al Abideen. Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, we know that what we are about to do pleases you. We know that what we are about to do places happiness in your hearts. Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, we wish to pledge to you and pledge to Sayyid al Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein and pledge to the master of our time, Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, that every ounce of our existence, every drop of our body, every single element of our life will be dedicated towards the Ahl al Bayt. And with that commitment, with that determination, with that focus, we are moving towards Karbala. We are responding to the call of Aba Abdullah. هَلْ مِنْ نَاصِرٍ يَنْصُرُنَا هَلْ مِنْ مُغِيثٍ يُغِيثُنَا إِنَّهُمْ فَرْزُكْنَا زِيَارَةَ الْحُسَيْنَ إِنَّهُمْ فَرْزُكْنَا زِيَارَةَ الْحُسَيْنَ كَهَا يَكَارْ وَدَرْكَا My name is Mohammed Abbas um, and I am a GP from London. Alhamdulillah, I've been on uh, Ziyarah before, uh, in and out of Arba'in time. I think Arba'in, if we're talking about Arba'in specifically, it's a very special time uh, and it's always been a special time because the other Ziyarahs are often a time for us to introspect and look at ourselves and talk about things and speak to the Imams on a one-to-one -one level and really often talk about our own issues but Arba'in is probably the only time I think in the calendar when you get to meet 
so many other people who love Imam Hussein al Islam. And sometimes you get in your mind that it's just you, but actually, when you're there walking with them, it's the most amazing thing. You're walking with millions of other people, and it's not just the same person, it's the young, the old, uh, from all the areas of the world, and they're all coming because of they love Imam Hussein al Islam. And there's so many things about the walk that just inspire you. This is truly the walk of love, which everyone knows that, but why is it the walk of love? Because everyone there is in love with Imam Hussein al Islam. They're walking for three days or even more, and their bodies are aching, and yet they'll do anything for you, anything to serve you, even other fellows who ask because they love Imam Hussein al Islam. They're walking in one direction. It's, it's just a single mass movement of love. And seeing the people on the, on the road, the people who are trying to help you, it's the most unbelievable experience because in every other walk of life, people are always grabbing you and saying, please, come here. I'm trying to sell you something. You must buy something. Come, come, it's really good for you. They're saying, please, come and sleep in my house. Come and use my bathroom. And you just think about, when would, when would you ever have that concept in your own self? When would you ever have that concept in yourself of saying to someone, please, you know, say if the shoe was on the other foot and it was in London and someone came, when would you say, please come and sleep in my bed, take my food, eat my clothes, you know, wear my clothes, eat my food, you know, stay with me, etc. You just, it's something that's so alien, but the love for Imam Sayyid Laysam just drives uh, all of the Iraqi people here to just do everything. An estimated 20 million people from over 60 countries will make their way to the city of Karbala in Iraq to mark the 40th day after the martyrdom of Hussein, son of Ali. Today is the 15th of November 2016 and we have just departed Najaf. We have given our last salam Amir al Mu'minin, Sayyid Abu Hassan Imam Ali alayhi salam, and we have departed with the group for Karbala. It is currently 9.30 a.m. and inshallah we plan on walking about 450 poles to our first mokab where we will inshallah spend the night and on the way we will be hosted by the people of Iraq and the rest of the mokab that are here along the way in their endless hospitality that has no ulterior motive, has no recompensation or no repayment that is required. What could possibly drive 20 million people to leave their homes and walk through desert plains in the midst of a war zone? facing the threat of suicide bombing and terrorist attacks. It is indeed nothing but a demonstration of love for a man who through his sacrifice for righteousness left nations eternally besotted. Nations who promised to give their lives in service for Hussein salam, the master of martyrs. Nations who vow, even in a matter of life or death, to never forget the 40th. My name is Shabazz Khan. Um, I'm from South London, I hate to be specific, proud of it as well, alhamdulillah. Um, and yeah, I'm here in Karbala. In Karbala, this is my, I think, fourth time, alhamdulillah. I came once during the time of Saddam, and I've come, uh, this is now my third Arba'een, and I come for one Ashura as well. Um, so that's, that's actually five times, I'm so blessed, so blessed. Oh my God, if you want me to compare the time of Saddam, I, I was eight years old when I came in 2002. And I remember one thing so specifically. We were sitting on Tilla Zainabiya, right? And my dad comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, Shabs, recite that, um, recite that know-how about Bibi Zainab. And I started reciting the Noha about Bibi Zainab, which is in Tilla Zainabiyya. And it goes on to Shami Gariba and it talks about Sayyid Zainab looking on to the, the, the killing of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, the killing of Ali al-Akbar alayhi salam, and what she did after, and the whole fact that Imam Sajjad's first ruling as an Imam 
was based on the question from Sayyid Zainab, do I protect my hijab or do I save my life? So this is the, 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 the noha that I recite in Urdu, Punjabi, Saraiki. It's got a mixture of all three. I was reciting and I was reciting softly and people started crying. And then they went from crying to wailing because the words become so strong. And when they got to the point of wailing, the guards came and picked me up and took me straight out. I was so scared. I was so scared because they, they wanted to stop anything. They wanted to stop everything. You weren't allowed to hit yourself. You weren't allowed to do the labek, Ya Hussein. You weren't allowed to do any of that. I remember even on Arba'in day, we were going into the harem and one of, the, one of my uncles had me on his shoulders and I'm reciting and everyone's crying and the guard turned his gun to me and said, stop. And I was like, oh my God, genuinely. And you know what? And then when I came first time for Ashura was the sec second time I came. And that was in 2013. And to see so many people surrounding the Haram of Aba Abdullah. I'm telling you, on Arba'in day, I was sitting in there. I'm holding the dhari, I'm reciting Ziyarat al-Ashura during the time so that the Haram is empty. The Haram was empty. There's bullet holes and crates from bombs and everything all over the place. From the attack in 91, it's exactly the same. The place is an absolute wreck. And then to come again in 2013 and see all the renovations to Abba Abdullah, to see the new gold on Abu Fadl Abbas's minarets, it was absolutely mind blowing. And uh, as a comparison, I think it, it's literally a difference between hell and heaven. It is incredible, incredible. And to see how many people that could show, express their love for Abba Abdullah after the end of Saddam was ama absolutely amazing, right? Beyond, beyond any comprehension. And it's just made my craving for Kal Karbala that much more. Uh, now we're here, we're walking. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A few moments ago, the streets were full of the azan, the call to prayer, and it reminds us of the azan of Hazrat Ali al Akbar on the day of Ashura. There are millions of people that are walking today to Karbala. And everything has stopped. Life has come to a complete end. And everyone is heading for the washroom, heading for the Husseiniyas, heading to the Imam Baghdad to pray. This is one of the most important acts because we stop thinking about all of our worldly desires. And we focus only on Salah, only on Namaz. And that is the importance of this walk, to bring us back to our roots, to bring us back to what is important, to bring us back to what is wajib and has been decreed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The common practice of walking towards the city of Karbala, sometimes barefoot, originates from the very footsteps of the family of Hussein led by Zainab, the daughter of Imam Ali, and Ali Zain al Abidin, the son of Hussein. The remaining family members return to Karbala on the 40th day after the martyrdom of Hussein salam, after being released as prisoners of war from the shackles of the ruler Yazid. The 40th is historically noted in some traditions as the first time the family of Hussein alayhi salam were allowed to publicly mourn the death of their family members. In some narrations, the companions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, such as Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari were also amongst those who reached the city of Karbala on this day. The first gathering of lamentation took place in Karbala on this day, and thus it continued as a tradition for the followers of the family of the Holy Prophet throughout the generations which up until today fulfills the prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad that states that God will create a nation that will mourn Hussein. Alayhi salam 
until the day of judgment. So we're at full 198. Um, alhamdulillah, going pretty well. Back is a little hurting. Um, we have to go to 217 for our uh, resting point for today. Um, alhamdulillah, this is my first walk. Uh, it's been a great experience so far. Inshallah, um, we're praying that uh, all goes well for the rest of the day. Uh, we stop at 217 tonight, inshallah, I think. Uh, so far, so good. Words can't describe what kind of experiencing I'm going through. Um, I don't know what I don't know what to say. Uh, feet are sore, back is sore, but I want to keep going with this walk. And uh, hopefully the next two days, uh, the love of Hussein will motivate us to keep going and uh, hopefully uh, carry on this walk. My name is Ammar, I come from London, I'm a mechanic, buses, cars. Uh, this is my fourth time visiting uh, Imam Hussein on the Arba'in. I've been in other times, but in terms of Arba'in, this is the first one. First time was uh, me and a couple of friends. This is um, with a group at the moment, spiritual journeys. I think uh, everyone has a personal relationship with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and everyone comes for different reasons but probably one of the main reasons is to thank Imam Hussein alayhi salam and renew our allegiance with him and show our appreciation for what he's given us and tell him that we stand with him and stand for what he stood for inshallah <clears throat> generally speaking when you're when you're in Najaf personally like I said everyone has a personal relationship but personally I feel like Najaf is a place of calm serenity peace and when writing for, um, when writing, I mean, I write my own poetry. I tend to write more, most of my poetry, either on the walk, or surrounding the days of our Ba'in, or surrounding the days of our Maharam. Throughout the year, I don't really write much. I try to, but nothing comes out. So, I'm not sure what that is. But um, coming to Imam Hussain al Salam, it's uh, it's just sadness. That's all you feel throughout the way. Sometimes you'll be walking. You know, you walk on your own or with a group and suddenly you'll just start crying throughout the walk. You'll just remember a moment and you'll just connect with him and, and you know, refocus on him and, and begin to cry and go through different uh, visualizations of, of the day of Ashura and what happened. That tends to happen quite a lot when you're walking. You see a lot of people just walking and, and reciting Noha to themselves. Um, in terms of reciting in, in London, and reciting here, it's two different things because uh, <clears throat> you're right next to the Imam. You're in his haram, in the, in the vicinity of his sanctuary. Whether you're in Karbala or not, you're approaching his sanctuary. And that, that has a... I think that there's, there is a feeling that comes with it that you can't control. There is something in the air. There is definitely some sort of connection, some spiritual connection when, you, when you're in the vicinity of the haram that you just feel this sadness that just comes every now and then. Um, I don't know what else. I've never asked him for anything, ever. I've always gone to say thank you, that's it. That's all I go for. So when it comes to uh, why I go there, I have searched myself and I've come to the conclusion that I just come to thank him. And that's all I can do. I can't really give him anything more than he's given me. And I, I pray that I will be a servant to him, inshallah, and whatever small more we can do, that's what we hope to gain. Assalamu alaikum. We are on the road from Najaf to Karabala and uh, we are now at pole 217. Uh, we got here before our group. This is our Mokib where we're going to be staying tonight and I'm standing here on the road just to make sure that none of our group, none of the Zawa from our group go past this point. Inshallah we'll stay here, we'll have a Majlis tonight and then straight after Salat al-Fajr in the morning 
We'll start making our way for the second day of this trip. We intend to be in Karbala by Saturday, inshallah. So we're taking three days to make our journey. We have just arrived at our Moqib, uh, pole number 217. We started at pole number zero uh, this morning at about 9.30, 10 o'clock. It's taken us a few hours to get here, um, but we finally reached the market where we're going to be staying. Behind you, you have the poles that we are organized by. So we have poles 1 to 10, um, and pole number 1 is at the front. 2, 3, 4 going all the way to 10, covering us all the way so that people who walk at different paces are covered. If you want to walk fast, there is the pole number 1 and pole 10 for people who want to take their time, experience all the different services, all the different foods, all the different khidme. Um, we've just reached here, everybody's a little bit tired but excited. We can't wait to reach Karbala, inshallah. Tomorrow is the main day, the longest day, but inshallah the energy will be up. We're about to have a majlis. I'm going to say a hadith to you, and it's hard for me to say this hadith, but one of the ulama said to me, he said, say, you don't say this hadith regularly, but we are on our way to Karbala. Imam al Bakr says, you don't tell our Shia about everything that happened in Karbala. <laughs> Ibrahim left his family in a barren land, so did Abba Abdullah. And that's why when Imam al Salaf wrote Ziyarat Walid, something of that barren land hurt Imam al Salaf. Because in the last few days before Imam al Salaf died, they, did, they kept on oppressing Imam al Salaf. They kept on torturing him. How would they torture him? Not physically in jail. They tried to burn the house of Imam al Salaf while he was in Salaf. Mansour al Dawani had ordered his soldiers that when his daughters are all in the house, burn the house. So one of the soldiers came. The, lit the fire in the house of Imam Salaf. Our hearts are in Medina with him. They lit the house on fire. Imam Salaf, what hadith mentions, ran from one part of the house to the other, carrying the daughters, carrying the daughters of Al Muhammad. You can imagine Imam Salaf would say to him, carrying the daughters of Al Muhammad until he eventually left the house. When he left the house, you can imagine the state of Imam al that fire all over his dress, fire all over the daughters of Rasulullah. <laughs> Amongst those who went to see him, one of them said, I came to Imam al he was crying after that day like I've never seen him. I said to him, oh Imam, what makes you cry? What is it that makes you cry? If you are Muhammad have been through the worst of oppression. But I see you cry like I've never seen you cry before. He said to him, I don't cry because of what's happened to us. And what is it that makes you cry? He said, rather I cry. Because when I was going around collecting my daughters, all of you know where I am. Rather when I was going around collecting my daughters with their dresses on fire, I thought to myself, what happened to Zainab on the night of the eleventh of Allah, when she carried the daughters of Rasulullah from one side to the other? He said, I now pictured the night of the eleventh of Muharram and I saw my auntie Zainab running from one tent to the other. I saw all Rukhaya on one side. Sayyid Hyderul Jaizani, Mullah Ammar al Nashid, and we 
we are absolutely exhausted at the moment. Uh, we are here at poll number 217, so we did about 400 polls today. And uh, if you could just spin the camera that way and take a look at all of these people that are already knocked out. Mashallah, we have a lot of brothers here who uh, have been walking all day. But Alhamdulillah, uh, we are 400 poles closer to Imam Hussein. And inshallah tomorrow, we will begin with day two of our walk towards Abba Abdullah and Abul Fadil Abbas, inshallah. Right now it's about 5.30 in the morning, day two of the walk. Uh, we're all just waking up, getting ready for Salat al-Fajr. After namaz, we're going to have food, breakfast, and then we're going to head out. We're gonna, our goal is to reach Mokab 8.08 by the end of the day. As per tradition, Iraqi natives leave their families and their homes in order to set up tents known as mokibs to simply serve the lovers of Hussein on the roads towards Karbala. Services such as handing out free food, distributing water, providing shelter to the pilgrims are carried out by locals and people of all ages who come from various different countries simply to serve Hussein alayhi salam and his pilgrims, be it through life or in the face of death. Nothing prevents the continuation of honoring the 40th of Hussein alayhi salam. So uh, it's day two of the book, uh, love uh, to Allah Abdullah Alhamdulillah, you just see how many people there are every morning you wake up and you're so humbled to be here again and be given the opportunity to come to Allah Abdullah. It's something that is always part of you. You always feel that you want to come back to Karabla all the time. But then sometimes you forget that you're not the only person who loves Allah Abdullah. It's not you see the love here, the amount of people who are devoting themselves physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, everything they have uh, to come to serve about the people who are also walking and serving, people who are working in the mokhans are serving, people who are helping from home are paying and giving money. It's just something so humbling to be part of. And uh, the chance to be here again is just it's such, such a blessing, really. Uh, the thing about this walk that is so amazing is you've seen so many denominations and people from different places around the world, all driven by the love of God. Wanting to be with him, but we wanting to be with each other, hugging each other, holding each other, uh, helping each other get through. It's, it's something beautiful. It also breaks your heart because you can't help but think of those whose walk we're, we're doing. The sunnah of this walk is the sunnah of Bibi Zainab. And you think that the best of creations and those who are the guiding lights are. The ones who helped us, taught us so much, were treated in the worst of ways. And we, or at least myself, the worst of people, are treated in the best of ways. It just makes you think, it just breaks your heart because this is, uh, this is just not the right way. This, this world just reminds you. And the thing that strikes me is, is the depth and, and the number and the range of Zuwar. Just, it just never ceases to amaze me. I think this year I've, I've seen so many small, two, three-year-olds who are giving out tissues, who are standing in a row with their parents saying, Le Baik Ya Hussein, trying to encourage the Zuwas to kind of keep going and be motivated and giving out juice. And I've taken pictures of all these young, young Zuwas, but also just lovers of Mom Hussein because 
it's just so fascinating and inspiring to see uh, how the love of Mom Saints is, is brought into them from such an age. And then on the other side, you see, just today I was walking and I was walking next to some, some man and he was really old. And the more I walked, the more I realized he was taking two or three steps for every one step everyone else was taking. So we kind of tried to say, you know, can we help you? Can we, can we give you a hand? His head was bent down, he had a small stick and he was just going to help. He said, no, Mom Hussein, Mom Hussein. And he was drawing power from Mom Hussein. The, quicker, the, the closer he got, you could feel he was, he was getting more energy and strength. And it was something just miraculous to see. Um, as, a, as a scientist as well, I think there's something to be said about the food that we eat. You know, when you walk, you break down, or when you do any exercise, you break down your muscle, your protein breaks down. And then as you eat, you replenish that protein yeah, with whatever you've eaten. This food is special. And I tell people, people say to me, should I eat on the walk? Because you know, you're a doctor, you know, would you advise it? I say, eat everything. Eat everything. Obviously don't overeat, you know, eat in a, in a nice way, don't do asraf, but eat everything. Try everything. One, the people who are, who are offering it to you are so in love with Imam and Ahlul Bayt that when you, when you just have a bit of their food, they feel so happy. They feel like their sacrifice has been accepted. And you feel connected to them. Give them that reward for the efforts they made. But two, and this is the bit that is amazing, is that by the end of this three days, spiritually, you're walking, and every time you walk, you think, this is hard, but Imam Sajjad went through something harder. This is hard, but Sayyidah Zainab went through something harder. And she had all of those expectations and importance that the whole Islam was riding on their shoulders. If anyone had an opportunity to stop, it was the Imam Sajjad. He's seen everything. He's got all these aches and pains. He's been whipped. He's the best of creation, being treated in the worst of ways. We are the worst, or I am the worst of creation, the sinful, being treated in the most loving of ways. And yet, Imam Sajjad continues. We must continue it and follow his steps. in the Blessed Walk from Najaf to Karbala 2016. Uh, this is my first time uh, for the Arba'in Walk towards Karbala. I came to Karbala once before in uh, December 2002 when um, Saddam was still alive at that time. And the, the difference between uh, my experience now compared to back then uh, is a major difference. I see that the Shia are a lot more stronger here. They're more confident and more open in practicing their faith. Alhamdulillah. And also coming towards Karbala, back then when I came for the first time, I was only 16 years old, so I had a limited knowledge of Karbala and its significance. This time coming now, uh, a more mature man with more understanding of the Battle of Karbala, more understanding of Imam Hussein, more understanding of the struggles, um, it means so much more to me and it's more um, significant and also more personal. I'm the, coming to Arba'in for my first experience and the first time I'm actually experiencing Mokibs and you know, the khidmah that they do. And uh, it's really like heartwarming how they come, they stop you in the middle of the road and they're like, come, come, eat, drink, whatever you need, we'll provide for you. You want a massage, you want food, you want a place to stay, place to sleep, Wi-Fi, cigarette, whatever you want, we'll provide for you. And it's really humbling and it shows you that the love that they have for Imam Hussein, that they love Imam Hussein so much that a guest of Imam Hussein is treated like a king, like a king in, in, in his homeland. It's a beautiful experience, very humbling. Uh, the walk is very, very different to what you see like on television. Because on television, it's very easy to look at anything in the comfort of your own home, in 
the comfort of your sofa with your cup of tea, you know, the heating on if it's the winter or the fan on when it's the summer. But being here, actually experiencing the struggle, actually experiencing the, the steps walking forward, actually experiencing the hospitality, you know, it gives it such more of, of a, a sentimental touch and a more a personal touch that I'm actually here, I'm breathing in that, that air, that Najafi air, that Karbalai air. You know, I'm actually experiencing the mokibs coming up to me saying, Oh, you are a Zawar of Imam Hussein, come, come, pulling my arm this way, pulling my arm that way. You know, being here is, is so much more, um, is so much more beneficial. Right? There's only a limited amount you can experience from watching television, but actually being here, soaking in the atmosphere. Uh, me, when I, as I started, you know, with, with my Nia and, and, and walking towards uh, Imam Hussein and just thinking about it. That relationship you have with Imam Hussein, that bond strengthens as you get closer and closer and closer, which you're not going to get uh, sitting at home watching television or even in Majlis. It's, 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 it's limited. But being here in Iraq, walking towards Karbala, that bond is, is something. Trust uh, serving the Zawar of Abu Abdullah Hussein as they are doing, Alhamdulillah, one of the many Muakib who are uh, being set up for um, several weeks to try and uh, provide services amongst the number of uh, many uh, projects that the Zahra Trust organized. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And this is such an honor to be able to uh, serve these Zawar of Imam Hussein in the millions this year, uh, destination towards Karbala. With their one of the more familiar stations during the routes is the Zahra's Trust Station or Mokib. The Zahra Trust has helped over 50,000 refugees, provided more than 10,000 hot meals, launched over 96 aid projects and has more than 5,000 registered orphans to look after and yet they come every year without fail to volunteer their time and serve the pilgrims of Imam Hussein. It's my first year doing Arbaid and mashallah this is the most amazing experience anyone can ever get. Alhamdulillah I've been given the chance to serve my Mola, Imam Hussein. I'm currently in Zara Trust Mokib, helping out the Zawar, giving them food, giving them something to drink. You know, because you are a walker, yes, but you're also a khadim, you're a servant of Allah. You have to help everyone that's walking. By doing this, your iman grows. I'm telling you, it's an amazing, amazing experience. Any of you that have any doubt of coming to Al-Bayin, doing the Mashaya, I'm telling you, leave that all behind and come and visit your Mola. Amazing experience, you won't regret it. Just the light, the people that you see, it's just, it's another world. It's another world. You know, first thing we must understand, Sayyidah Zainab never had a choice. She had no choices. We come here and some of us are tired. Oh, my leg hurts. And we sit down and we rest and we're hungry and we want food to walk. Remembering Imam Hussein Islam, but you're also remembering Zainab. It's not a question of do you feel pain? Do you feel anything? Do you, feel... you walk this walk and you say, the more pain I feel, the closer I get to why I came. And we must understand that Imam Zain al Abidin Islam, he wasn't given a choice. No one said to him, do you want to rest? Or are you thirsty? Or do you want a cup of tea? Um, or in my case, coffee. And you say to someone, oh, I want hot water. And they run around. No one did that. They didn't care. They just dragged them and took them and didn't give two hoots about what they felt, what their needs are. So when we're walking, we must keep in our mind that we're walking the walk of no choices. So don't make choices for yourself. Don't say, oh, I'm in pain or it's hot. Or, I want to walk this walk when it's 45 degrees and I want to collapse because I know my imam collapsed time and time again. <laughs> the first thing I do when I reach Karbala and I see the, the shrines, the, these golden magnificent domes that give heaven their light is I do my, my sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank him that I managed to actually fulfill this walk, I completed this walk and that I was 
blessed to be able to do this walk. Then I look at my imams and I turn around and look at them and I say, don't make this my last time for my ziara. Because if I don't come back, that will be my death. Because I can't take separation from them. My love for them is at a level where I cannot explain to anybody. And I don't come to ask for them, I come to visit them. I don't want anything. I don't want anything. I don't want money. I don't want help. I don't want anything. I haven't come to ask them anything. I've come to visit them. I've come to say to them, look, I am your servant. In this world, I'm your servant in the hereafter. This is my allegiance. I will take every stress, pain to come and visit you, to say to you that if I was there in Karbala, yes, I would have given my life before anybody else. I don't want nothing. I haven't come to ask them for anything. I've come here just to say, I visit you. Remember me. Remember that I visited you. And my mom, if hell is what is destined for me, then all I ask from them, and this is the only prayer I say, just once let me meet you and kiss you and then let what's to be be. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mufaddal Dalal. I'm from Dubai. Uh, right now I'm walking on day two. Uh, around 8 p.m. I've been like the last guys, we are like a bunch of five of us, stayed back, uh, absorbing the whole thing. This is my third year actually, back to back. On my first year on the walk, I met one of the Sayyids and uh, just outside of Abdullah's harem and he told me that you've been here for the first time, you are actually on the guest list. You are the special people who've been invited to gain this opportunity. And he said that you've come here, inshallah, first time, you'll be here for the next 40 years. As, as, you know, a stupid question came out, like, you know, I would be like 75 then. And he said that it's about Abdullah, he's going to keep bringing you in. So, Alhamdulillah, this is my third year. First two years went very scot-free, no blisters on the way. Very helpful. All, all is the baraka of the Imam and all his duas. He's been helping a lot. Very motivational. Very picked up and uh, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hussein Jian, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I came here because. Um, I feel like honestly I was called by Imam Hussein. Um, this is the only year I can come for next year. I'm starting a master's degree. And so I figured, I guess I just got married as well. Um, and my wife said that let's go to, to Kerbala and we'll do the walk. And I said that, of course. So Alhamdulillah, I'm here now. Uh, it's the second day. Um, it's a little chilly, but not too bad. Um, people are still awake. It's about almost 9 o'clock. Um, and there's people still walking. They've been walking for days. Inshallah, tomorrow is the last day of walking, so we'll get. To, we're hoping to get there about two o'clock. Um, but it's just amazing to see so many people um, giving from their hearts. They don't have much, but the people here, they really, really uh, love Imam Hussein and Islam, and they love the Zawad of Imam Hussein, which is something I think that's very, very rare. If, if, um, if even like uh, exists anywhere else in the world. So I'm so glad to be here and I have a lot of me. It's my first time and I want to come every single year in Shalom. Alhamdulillah went well. I'd have loved to go on to day three, but unfortunately I can't. So inshallah next year. Uh, day 
about 25 to 30 kilometers from the holy city of Karbala. Inshallah, today we intend to get into Karbala around about Maghrib time, which is about 5:30, 6 o'clock uh, local time. Whosoever visits Hussein, it is, it is as if they are visiting God the Almighty in his throne. May Allah bless you and your efforts and your dedication.